did the clinical nurse specialists or um, other healthcare professionals play an extended role after you were going into the rehabilitation and recovery period? Um, well, I did see the Macmillan nurses um, and I did see uh, a nurse specialist in, in psycho-oncology mm. um, because I, I was diagnosed with reactive depression to the situation rather than normal depression. I suppose it's fairly understandable because most people are going to get feel down, miserable, but um, and I saw this, almost saw the same district nurse fairly regularly, and that was uh, quite helpful. When you see a familiar face, it's always quite helpful within that. Let's talk about the depression a little bit, because a lot of viewers struggle with the emotional complications of cancer, yeah. but it may or may not be recognised for them. Um, how, did, how did you notice that your mood was not quite right? Because uh, I, felt, feel, I felt a great deal of guilt of what I was doing to everybody else. Not ha for me, I felt it, uh, guilt of what I was putting everybody else through. I think my mood was miserable from what I, I, can, I believe people used to say. I didn't seem to be chirpy or happy. I was com quite insular, non-communicative. Mm. And I presume that um, that's what it was. And they got in contact with Mac, uh, Macmillan's through the, uh, sir, the doctors, doctors, my doctors. And they, I was diagnosed with, with reactive depression. Depression can affect people in different ways. Mm -hmm. um, what were the main symptoms for you? I think it was more that I was insular and yeah. not very communicative. Mm. Um, and also, partly you could also say the fatigue could be part of that as well, because that is part of, you can become very tired when you're suffering from depression. Had you lost interest in doing things? Or? I found it very hard to read books. My attention span wasn't great because you, you can't really concentrate on anything. Mm. Any physical symptoms in the body? Um, the fatigue you mentioned, mm. sleep problems as well? Yes, I was having trouble sleeping, uh, falling asleep, because it used to take me a couple of hours of lying there. And then when you lie in there, that's when you'd get all your miserable thoughts. Mm. <laughs> when it's two, three o'clock in the morning, you're still not falling asleep. That's when you tend to be very miserable. Sometimes <laughs> if you have to, time on your hands, that's when those negative thoughts will go through your mind? Yeah, because that's, that's it. If, you, if you've got, if, I always find that, that time of morning, or when you say you've got too much time on that's when you start to think about the worst case scenario. Mm. Whereas if you've got something to do, you're not thinking about it, you, you're concentrating on anything other than silly, stupid thoughts about what's the worst that can happen, when really you should be saying, Let's just take one day as it comes, take that day, deal with that day, and don't try and look four or five months ahead because you, there's nothing you can do about it. You've just got to live for the day. What were those negative thoughts, if you don't mind saying, going through your mind about what might happen? Well, I suppose one of them is that, would it be better for everybody if you didn't wake up the next morning? Mm. You know, that, you know, just not wake up. Is that because you'd felt at that time a burden to others or was it too hard to face what might happen? I think it was more that I felt a burden mm. and I, I could see what I was putting everybody else through. Okay. And I think it's the guilt mm. of what you're putting everybody else through. Mm. So at times you thought is, it, may, it, may, it would be better if I wasn't around. Yeah. Mm. Which I did tell them that and they said, stop being stupid. <laughs> you're not a burden. It's, good, it's appropriate to seek out that reassurance and they told you that's not the case, so that's important. In addition to that, were you worrying about the prospect of a complication coming along or the cancer progressing in the future? You are always going to worry about that. It's, but as I say, I trusted what was being done. I, 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 you know, and you think, well, they, they've had a scan, they've had one scan before you started, so they know what they're dealing with. Then you think they're monitoring you all the way through, they're taking your bloods, and, sh and if there was a problem, they'd be able to see by what was happening. Mm. And that, you've got to say, you've got to trust, because if you don't trust, it's going to affect, affect the way you are, which in the end, 
will make you more miserable. Mm. But also, if if you don't trust, how are you going to fit, get things to work? Mm. You've got to work with work with what, the, what you're going on with. Yeah. Otherwise, how are you going to progress? Mm. If you because if you can continuously going to try and fight your treatment, it's not going to do you much good. Mm.